You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey, hey, friends, welcome back to another episode of Side Hustle Pro. Today in the guest chair, I have Germany G. Germany is a brand and image styling professional who's been in the fashion industry for over 10 years. Having previously worked for Gap Inc.'s accessible luxury brand, Banana Republic, she was well on her way to climbing the corporate ladder. And it wasn't until Germany styled her roommate for a speaking engagement that she realized she was meant for more. So in today's episode, she's going to share how she went from corporate to launching her own styling business, GG & Co., She launched in 2015 as a side hustle to support the growing demand for her fashion forward eye. After working 10 years at Gap Inc., Germany stepped off the corporate ladder. In faith, she created her own career path going full time with Gigi & Co. in 2018, servicing clients in tech, entrepreneurship and entertainment. But you will hear the monkey wrench that life threw her after she went full time and how she hustled to make ends meet during that time as she worked to get back on her feet. Germany's fresh approach to styling adds personality and authenticity to fashion. She embraces a feel-good, timeless theme to her looks by using clothing to reflect character and values, and each wardrobe solution is tailored to the person, allowing them to proclaim their essence from the inside out. Through the years, she and her team have styled marketing maven Bazoma St. John. She styled CNN correspondent Abby Phillip, Harlem actress Jerry Johnson, comedian Kev on stage, and wife Melissa Fredericks, and the largest Black-owned Vinters Robin and Andrea McBride of McBride Sisters Wines, just to name a few. So today, we will get into Germany's journey and so much more. Let's jump into the interview. Welcome, Germany, to the guest chair. Thank you for having me. Of course. Pre-show chat, you guys, we were talking about the fact that I have actually been following Germany's career for a while. And I do that sometimes, you guys. So if you reach out and I don't, you know, respond right away, sometimes I just want to lay low and and kind of stalk you a little bit and then (laughs) see how you evolve. So I've been following her since she was styling some of my um, friends who are in tech or entrepreneurs and then seeing her grow as she has and go out full time on her own in her own business has been just wonderful and inspiring to watch. And I know it will inspire so many other people. So let's get into it. Now, were you always a stylish person? I have a feeling you were one of those best dressed in high school, in college. (laughs) I was probably best dressed. I've always been stylistically inclined. The thing is, though, (laughs) I like how you say that. (laughs) It's kind of crazy because I don't think it it finally blossomed until I moved to California. I went to school a lot of my elementary school years I was in private school and so we had to wear uniforms Uh, and my dad's a pastor and so everything had to be buttoned up I couldn't wear skirts above my knees I'm from the (laughs) south so it was really like no (laughs) and then when I would try to experiment with my style especially Mm -hmm. in high school my mom, who is in finance, would be like, you're not going outside with that on. <laughs> Absolutely not. Where you think you're going? Where exactly that. So in college, I was experimenting a little bit. I actually went to college as a biochem major. I left as a fashion really? major. So if you want to get into that, we can. But yeah, I thought I was going to be a dentist. That was not God's plan for me. And I moved to California to work at Gap uh-huh. Corporate. And okay. it was less Southern, less buttoned up more casual. So I had to understand what my casual looks like. And then from that point, my style really blossomed and I kind of started playing with things and understanding what I really like. So yes, I was always the Southern belle buttoned up the prettiest dress when I was living in the South. And then once I became an adult and could do things on my own, that's when I really started to get into things that made me feel good and showing up and then somehow I became a stylist. I don't really know how it all happened, but it's <laughs> <working>. <laughs> well, that's what we're here to unpack today. 
Um, and why did you make the switch from like bio chem or you know the the dentist path you were on into fashion styling? <laughs> oh my gosh! I went to a fashion show at my college and sat there through that fashion show and said, I could not wear scrubs the rest of my life. I cannot do this. And <laughs> I don't listen. <laughs> the most random idea. It sounded like it said something on live. And you, where, did you go to, where did you go to college? I went to North Carolina State University. So home of the wolf pack. And I went for biochemistry. I had no clue that they even had a fashion and textile management program. And in my mind, as a very high functioning and achieving individual, <laughs> I was like, I can double major in fashion and biochem because fashion has to be easy. And I went to go talk to the head of the fashion department. And he said, absolutely okay. not. You have to choose Elaine. Wow, and I sat there in yeah. his office for about 15 minutes staring at him. And he said, I'm just going to drop all your biochemistry cast classes. So he made the decision. <laughs> you, could tell. you could tell. He knew where his heart was. I yeah. love that. So the decision was actually made for me. I, it was a, he put, I was at the ledge. He pushed me off the ledge. Yeah. So, sometimes yeah. you need that permission too. Cause especially I know when it comes to something like fashion, right? Just like you assume this easy. You probably also felt for like, sure. oh, this is a real major. Will people respect this, right? Like you have those right. things that you're wrestling with because of what is traditionally held up exactly. with this theme. Exactly. So I'm glad that you went after it and pursued it um, from yeah. an academic standpoint too, right? Because yeah, talk to us about what that was like actually studying fashion and not just yeah. picking up one day and saying, oh, I like fashion, so I'm going to do it. For sure. So studying fashion was very interesting, especially at the school that I went to. And so... I majored not in design, but I majored in brand marketing and management because I wanted to be very ah, smart about it still. Okay. Because at the end of the day, even if this doesn't work out, it yeah. is a more specialized version of a business degree, if you will. Okay. And okay. so uh, I went in doing brand marketing and management. And so you learn about the fashion industry, you learn about the retail industry and um, specifically. So a lot of case studies about how Macy's became Macy's, how coach mm -hmm. became coach and trying to figure out how to find white space opportunities in businesses. And so I was like, oh, like I really enjoy this. I really enjoy the strategy of making a business work and specifically for a fashion atelier or for a corporate retail space. And so that really intrigued me. And I said, oh, I wanna be a buyer. I wanna be a merchant. I wanna be the one who puts the clothes into the stores for the customer. Yeah. And I have my mindset on that. And so you, of course you learn about fashion and you learn about how these entities became to be. And you also learn about garments and fabrics mm -hmm. and fabrication and how these work together. But I was so far away from the design element and I was very much so focused on the business of it all. The and I love the business of okay. fashion. Yeah. And so very that's why I went to Gap. I went to Gap to become a merchant. <laughs> Yeah. So you were at Gap for 10 years. What roles were you in while you were there, right? Like, to oh my most, God. Like, you know, nowadays people don't stay anywhere, right? For two years even. So 10 Correct. years. Correct. Yes. What, what, what was your uh, trajectory while you were at Gap? Yeah, of course. So I started working at Gap because I was getting into trouble as a teenager. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe my junior year of high school, and my mom was like, you're going to work. Like, I'm tired, of, I'm tired of talking to you. So I applied to a few mm -hmm. places and I had a couple of friends in high school working at Gap. And so mm -hmm. I started working at Gap Outlet in North okay. Carolina and stayed working through there through college. They loved me so much. And so they would let me come on the weekends and work and then. I, uh, yeah, I spent most of my time in retail. I mean, like in the retail stores, the store associate. And yeah. after graduation, I was in between working. I was interviewing for Kohl's Corporate and then simultaneously interviewing for Gap for their mm -hmm. retail management trainee program. Mm -hmm. And Kohl's went on a hiring freeze. So Kohl's actually presented me an opportunity prior to Gap. Kohl's went on a hiring freeze. And during that, I was finishing up my interview process with Gap Inc., where 
you go through this rigorous program where you spend nine months in merchandising, production and sourcing, and they call it like the Harvard of retail. And so it was very much so the Hunger Games going through that interview process. No way. Uh, it was. I was like, this isn't, this is too intense, but I made it through. And they usually only pull candidates from Yale and Harvard, Ivy's. And I'm like, I go to NC State, but I'm somehow making it through each and every round. I'm, I'm making it. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I ended up being accepted into that program. And ironically, mm -hmm. right after I got accepted into the program, Coles was like, yeah, we're so great. We're, we're so excited. Uh -huh. to I was so like, well, late. actually. I'm moving to California. <laughs> so um, I was a retail management trainee for nine months. And then at the end, you get to decide what function of the business you want to be in, whether it's mm -hmm. merchandising, whether it's buying or whether it's production. And I decided I wanted to be a merchandiser. Of course, when I put my mind to something, I'm like, I'm doing this. And okay. well, what about I, merchandising did you like? I liked being able to talk to the designers about the garment, being able to have the okay. customer hat on and figure mm -hmm. out what works best for the customer, analyzing the business, being able to yeah. talk to the retail arm yeah. of the business. Because, of course, like I used to work in stores. So tell me how business is doing. How's the product mm -hmm. doing? But also, I liked seeing how the customer is connected with the product. Yeah. I really always enjoyed that. And so I knew I wanted to be a merchant. So I graduated mm -hmm. the program. I was a merchant at Old Navy Baby. I had a most amazing boss. And I told her I don't want to get pigeonholed in the baby department. Space. Because, yes. kind of, yeah. So kind of after, like, how retail corporate space works is you just kind of go up the chain within that division or you can try to take the risk early in your career because then people only know you as a men's merchant or mm. a women's merchant and yeah. when it became time for me to get promoted from assistant merchant to merchant mm. my boss she was very much so a champion of what i wanted to do and so she said hey there's a role at banana republic women's mm. in the women's division do you want to interview for that and so I said, yes. And so I ended my career as a merchandiser within a gap at Banana Republic. <laughs> in hindsight, thinking about what you were doing in merchandising, is that kind of what started to sow the seeds of being a stylist? Because as you're Absolutely. merchandising, you are kind of styling the floor, yeah. right? You're styling the whole store. Correct. Exactly that. And so they kind of play into each other, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so the merchant is the one who guides how the aesthetic of the clothes is going to look. They're talking to mm -hmm. the designers. They're making sure right. that this makes sense. But the stylist is the one who helps it sell, right? How does this look on the <laughs> mannequin, right? Yes. Because a lot of people, they go to stores and they're like, I'm just going to buy this off the mannequin because I don't want to think about it, right? Like. Yep. And I need this to make sense because I don't know how to make it make sense. And so yeah. I think in the beginning, I was like, oh, these two really, they work together very seamlessly. And I hadn't actually thought about being a stylist until I realized that they had a leg of that business within Gap Inc. And so I had pushed Gap for a long time, even when I was a retail management trainee, I said, oh, I'm very interested in like the styling portion of the business. Are there any opportunities? And they had just filled a role. Oh. And uh, I think on my way out, I was actually like very interested and they didn't have any bandwidth financially at the time. And so I felt like the doors kept closing within no. Gap specifically yeah. and they were opening up outside of the corporate space for me. And so I do believe that they do work together because I'm putting together pieces that help make my clients look good, that help mm -hmm. they help them show up. And so I'm yeah. just thinking about this a little more analytically and more personally versus as a whole for a company that is using their analysis and data to make money for their business. Very smart. You know, I just want to pause and highlight for a bit. So as you are side hustling or figuring out what you might want to do as you're exploring interests, see what you can do internally too. It might not always yeah. work out, but I like that you explored like, okay, how can I start to leverage what I'm doing or interested in? What can I do internally to grow here? And, yeah. you know, there may not always be that opportunity, but at least try and see 
what all exists inside of your company. Yeah, because at least um, see if you like it or not first. Right, right, right. See if you like it, it or not. It's paid. so huge. Yep, it still get paid. See if you like it or not. Like part of the yeah. Sci House Pro ethos, right? Tell us, when did you start styling people on the side outside of work? Yeah, so of course. San Francisco is Silicon Valley, up and yep. down, right? Yep, yep. That being there is one retail company in a sea of tech spaces. And so <laughs> I, have, I had a roommate who was going to a conference. She worked at Apple. And mm-hmm. of course, she had no idea. She's like, I don't know where to start. Can you help <laughs> me? <laughs> and she's like, you work at Gap. Please help me. I mean, you can help with something. And so I took her to the store. We found some outfits. She went to the conference. And of course, everyone was like, oh, my God, I love your outfit. And she said, oh, my, my <laughs> put it together with me I can't take the credit and so uh, from there I had this eureka moment where I'm also living in California right people love Mm -hmm. wine in California so I would have women come to my house probably five or six once a quarter and Mm -hmm. we would talk about their body type we would talk about style and we would talk about hey if you're a rectangular shape or if you Mm -hmm. are a pear this will look best on you. And this is why this outfit may not look the best on you, but these are things yeah. that you can do to make this work for you. And so it. I would talk I to them that. about, yeah, I would talk to them about style. I call it sipping style. Right. Uh-huh. And so we did them once a quarter and that took a turning point where everyone was like, well, I love what you're doing from a cohort standpoint, but how can we work together personally? And so then all of my weekends were filled up with me going to people's houses and shopping for them. And there became a moment where I had worked with Bozema St. John's Minty. And Uh she said, I really think you should work with Boz. And I want to introduce you to, and there was a, uh, she was speaking at an engagement. And so I went to the speaking engagement, but as per Bo's, right, she really came for the speaking engagement and she left. And I was like, oh no, I missed my opportunity. Ah! But she shared her email with me and I sent a cold pitch to Bose and, you know, she's in marketing. So I said, I had to make this really great. So I made a video and it popped up with outfits of how I thought, like if she was going on the news, if she had a speaking engagement, how it would look. And then I ended it with, do you want to roll with a G? And the next day she said, get her on the phone. I got to talk to her. (laughs) I love that. What? <laughs> that is so, so good. Like, I've never yeah. heard that before. That is so good. You're so right. You got to know who your clientele is. How are you going to pitch the chief marketing officer extraordinaire of so many major brands and come Listen. with, a you know, a bland, you know, a bland email? Like, no. Listen. That's not going to do it. <laughs> it was not going to do it. And so uh, I've been styling. I've been working with her for ooh, almost 10 years. Now I think we're about two years shy of 10 years. Yeah, it's crazy. And so I was wow, doing this on the weekends. Awesome. Yeah, I was doing it on the weekends. And after working with Bose, it became like, are you going to be doing this on the weekends? Or are you going to start taking this seriously and this be a full-time situation? And so I had to decide. And of course, we see what happened. I'm now that went from my side <laughs> hustle to my main, my main squeeze. Yes. How did you prepare for that? Right? Like on the financial side, you know, you had some big decisions to make, right? Like, yes, yeah. you have a big client, but you could always lose that client, right? So how do you plan to cover your yeah. bills once you quit? 100%. So uh, there was a, it was a long time before I quit. So I knew mm-hmm. about two years. I probably was styling for three years at, mm-hmm. while I was working at Gap. I knew about at the two year mark that I needed to start making some changes. So I was having conversations mm-hmm. with my mother who I said mm-hmm. earlier is in finance, right? She's okay. like, well, you got to save X amount of money. You live yeah. in California. You've got to start saving. You got to start saving now. And so she gave me a target that I need mm-hmm. to march towards. And uh, that felt good. I, I, but there's a quote that's out there that says you can save like 50000 and lose it. Or you can save 5000 and soar. And so there's never really like the absolute right mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Right. But it feels more comfortable if you have money. Yeah. Bank, though, right? Did you meet does. that target or did you I feel did. comfortable? Of like, course, okay, I you did. Not okay. leaving those doors until... <laughs> 
Listen, Sharon Gerald does not play, okay? <laughs> when it comes to the money, she's the money lady. She does not play. And yeah. so I could not leave until I hit that mark. And it, it was very, very beautiful because that mark was around my 10-year anniversary at Gap, which is wild nice. because I was 16 when I started at Gap and then I, I left when I was 26. And so every time I say 10 years, everyone's like, wait, what? You look so young. How? Yeah. How? Yeah. Um, I was wondering that too. Okay, so that makes sense. Yes. But yeah, still 10 years. Yeah. Yes, it's still 10 years. I got my pen and everything on my way out. And so, yeah, we hit that mark. We hit that target. And um, mm. the most beautiful thing about hitting that target and taking that time was that I was able to leave on my 10 year anniversary. Oh, wow. Yeah. How poetic. Yeah. I've also never heard that. Like, how poetic. Like, it's your anniversary. Everyone's there to celebrate. You're like, all right. Hi. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was great knowing you. you. <laughs> oh, I still keep in contact oh with God. a lot of my with a lot of my team yeah. Gap. If you leave, you leave mm-hmm. not burning a bridge, right? Mm-hmm. Because you never For know. Sure. Business to always take a turn as and you have possible. to knock on those doors again. As much as possible. Now, yeah. what else did you have in place as far as your business? So Nothing. did you formalize <laughs> business structure? <laughs> no. <laughs> that is so no I had a bank I literally had a bank account and uh-huh. I had a bank account in a dream and I was oh, living God. in Oakland at the time and I had my site sold on Los Angeles and so uh-huh. quit my job and immediately moved to LA and the only client mm-hmm. I had in LA was Bose <laughs> and- <laughs> And I was like, what is it happening? No. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? Right. And so at that time, I had to do a lot of praying, a lot of fasting. And so every day I would wake up as if I was going to work and I would go to a Starbucks. I would set up my computer. And for 30 days, I did the 30-day free trial LinkedIn premium. And so I would send out emails to all of these executive women who were in yes. C-suite at an array of companies. And I would send them my pitch and I would say, hey, I've worked with Bose. I've worked with countless other women in the Bay Area yes. who are in your space. And I would love to work with you. And so the day that I was knocking on doors, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, said, I used that. I used that 30 days up. OK, great tip, y'all. I hope you wrote that. Get that premium, at least through the 30-day trial, if they still have right. it. I can't guarantee right. it's still there. I got to check on it. I don't know it. if it's still there, but listen. But like, you did it. Free, yes. You, or even pay for it, you know? Or like even pay it's for worth it. it. Yeah. Like, for 30 days to maximize that. For sure. If you're a small business owner, this is for you. Running a business is just plain hard. Endless to-do lists, employees to take care of, and your ever-present bottom line. So first of all, kudos to you for staying on top of it. And now I want to tell you about Gusto. Gusto builds an easier and more affordable way to manage payroll, benefits, and more. They help over 300,000 businesses by taking the pain out of tasks like automated payroll tax filing, direct deposit, health insurance administration, 401k, onboarding tools, you name it. Gusto makes it easy. And they really care about the small business owners they work with. Their support team is attentive and helpful. And since money can be tight sometimes, you'll even get three months free. Just go to gusto.com slash SHP and start setting up your business today. You'll see what I mean when I say easy. Again, that's three months of free payroll at gusto.com slash SHP. So what was the result? Did people write back? Did you get any clients? Yeah, people wrote back. So I got a couple clients. And then, of course, Bose has always put my name out. And so I was able to get clients. But it took about six months. And so I believe I started working with, after Bose, Valicia Butterfield-Jones. I started working with Latasha Gillespie, who is at Amazon Studios. And then things kind of took off and blossomed from there. And then the pandemic Right. Oh, so, yeah, oh. I, got, I was like, yes, 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 we're doing great. And then, boom, I was like, ooh, okay, ooh. I thought we were getting somewhere. 
Yeah. So how did you survive during the pandemic? How did I survive? I left Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I left without the intention of actually leaving. And so I usually, my god sister and our parents, our mothers, we do Mother's Day together. And at that time, you know, we all thought that by May, coronavirus would be over. Yes, yes, yes. And so (laughs) I left Los Angeles in March 2020, Mm -hmm. thinking that I would go back and I was still home in uh, like well after May, no wow. vacation in sight. And my mom was like, you're spending a lot of money just in rent and you're not there and there are no events mm-hmm. happening. You're not making money. What are you mm-hmm. going to do? Are you going to go back to corporate? What's happening? And so I was door dashing. Listen, I'm going to be the most resourceful person. And so yes. I was door dashing and praying like, God, you gave me this dream. What's happening? Yes. And uh I left my apartment. I actually paid to get my roommate out of the lease. Who that was a lot wow. of money, but you know, wow. I, I ble- bleeding money, and so mm-hmm. I helped her get out of the lease and left Los Angeles and became a nomad for three years. And mm-hmm. right after George Floyd happened, unfortunately, George Floyd did happen. But all of my clients who are who were in the diversity space had mm-hmm. to show up and be on camera. And they're like, okay. well, how do I do that? Because I've been in the house looking crazy for the past yes, couple yes. of years. I need to good yes. from the chest up. <laughs> right. And so we started our virtual styling service after oh, that. And it, okay. it kind of took off from there. And so mm-hmm. business had been like really great, unfortunately, after George Floyd. And so mm-hmm. we were able to start back and pick back up after that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That is some hustle. Like I wasn't expecting that. And I thank you for your transparency. So, oh, you know, you moved back home. So you were with yeah. your parents at that point. Yeah, I was with my parents at that and point. And then you were mm-hmm. doing DoorDash to, you yeah. know, make ends meet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. And then so as things started picking up at that point where you just like, I'm just going to stack as much as I can to recoup yeah. you know, what I lost and the that rent part. money I had to pay. Yeah. 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 And my mom was like, she said to me, we had a conversation. There are a mm-hmm. lot of people who don't have the fortunate ability to move back in with their parents and you yes. do. So you should take advantage of this time mm-hmm. as you will. And so yeah. I stayed with her for about three years and by stayed yes. probably after 2021 business mm-hmm. was skyrocketing and oh. I was spending two days, if you will, at home, <laughs> packing my bags to go to my next <laughs> location. <laughs> and I believe it the it was probably around this time last year I sat down and I was like, okay, God, like this has been fun, but like I need to get it somewhere. I'm tired. My friends would be like, hey, you left a sweatshirt at my house. My dad would say like, you have some shoes here. And I'm like, things are everywhere. Like I need to be somewhere where most of my stuff is. is. And so I moved to Atlanta in June of last year. And so now I just kind of travel when I need to. But I have Mm -hmm. um, two assistants in Los Angeles who pretty much hold down the fort. And so I'm really only in L.A. when I need me okay there and i kind of afford that's awesome yeah yeah (laughs) and you have a home base that's yours that's oh my god you know i was thinking like wow that sounds pretty sweet like you know you're just flying in and out you know you got staying at the parents house stack 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 like that (laughs) that might not be a bad idea (laughs) it isn't until it is you're right 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 (laughs) <laughs> right right i know what it is and i know the sacrifice of that though like moving back home and as try as you might like they're just still thinking like they can have input in your life you know, like oh my God. no 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 yeah i'm like i'm an adult <laughs> yeah. okay right i'm 30 okay yeah. like you don't pay no bills i pay what i need to pay here and like this insight i don't need it yes yes so i love that business pick back up and at what point were you able to start hiring these assistants? Oh, yeah, um, probably in 2021. So early 2021, uh-huh. that's okay. how good business was in 2020, wow. which is wild, right? And so in 2021, I was able to hire my executive assistant who still mm-hmm. has been working with me. He's virtual, so that's great. He kind of holds down yeah. the fort. I don't really need anybody in person right now. And then shortly after that, my mm-hmm. best friend who would see the chaos that I had going on. <laughs> I'm very great at the creative. The logistical, yeah. I don't have it. That's not how my brain... Uh-huh. I can get you from A to Z, but the steps in between A to Z, 
I can't. Like the twenty four <laughs> letters in between A to Z, I I don't know. Okay, yeah, but she's yeah. really good at that, and so I was able to bring her on, and mm. then uh, Nye and George. I met Nye. <laughs> in the pandemic as well. Mm -hmm. And so when I would go out to the Bay for photo shoots with the McBride sister, she would help with that because that's okay. where she was from. Got and it. then um, George, we actually interned together when we were in Los Angeles interning no, with a okay. um, celebrity stylist. And so we still work together, <laughs> but just in a different dynamic, which is yeah. equally odd um, because we interned together and now he works for me. <laughs> Wow. Wait, so when did you intern for the celebrity stylist? Was this yes. after Gap? This was during that six, yes, it was after Gap, during that six month period where I was emailing, cold emailing people on the LinkedIn premium. Mm -hmm. And then also I was like, okay, when I'm not doing that, then how am I getting experience? And so yeah. I got the opportunity to work with Apuje Kalu, who is an amazing celebrity stylist. I've he, heard the name, yeah. Yeah, who we work with? Well, Yvonne Orgy, because that's when okay. Insecure yes, was Maybe out. that's where I've seen his name. Yeah, like in Yvonne yep. Orgy, Jay Ellis. So I, he pushed me into the pond and I was like, okay, cool. But also celebrity styling is so very much different than the styling that I do or did at the time because now we also style celebrities, which is why yeah. I kind of shoot myself in the foot of the things that I say I won't do. And then <laughs> and it's calling you, it's calling you, you know? Yeah. Your gifts make room for you. And yeah, so I was working with him for about two or three months and I was like, I do not want to style celebrities. Like, thank you for this opportunity. But <laughs> why did you feel that way at first? So I started working with him during award season and award season oh, is crazy pushed, time, right? Yes. Crazy yes. time. And so we would have six clients on the roster and you're going to showrooms, you're picking up things from the dry cleaners, you're tailoring things, you're taking things to the tailor, you're meeting with these clients, it's very fun. And so we had like six clients who were like, oh, boom, 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 boom. We get to client number six and he texts us like, oh, so-and-so just flew in. We need you to go do a fitting right now. And you're like, I thought I was going to bed. And it would be like 20 hour days. And you're like, oh, but no, I'm not going to bed. Okay, cool. So you got to go do this fitting. And you go to the tailor and then go to the dry cleaner and then do this and that. And I was like, this is just too much. I like much. knowing my calendar. Yeah. Like, I am a very anxious person. And so, oh like, things being thrown at me. Yeah. I, just doesn't sit well. well. I'm relating to this so, so much right now. Like I did a stint in the celebrity world when I first graduated and, yeah. you know, you just articulated part of what was the issue for me. I was like, when do I get to breathe? Like I'm always holding my breath, waiting yeah. for like some emergency, some fire to put out. It's always a fire. It's always a fire. Always a fire. Like, I couldn't handle it. Right. I'm like, so you didn't know you was going to the Emmys yesterday? Right. You, didn't, you, you, didn't, didn't know. you didn't know you needed something to wear? Right. <laughs> It's oh, you didn't think you would need shoes. You thought you could go barefoot. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. Oh, got it. All right. So now I got five hours to make something happen. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And so I just knew I didn't want to work on immediacy or because my anxiety, I just knew it wouldn't bode well. And yeah. so I said, thank you for the opportunity. Great. Yes. And then he introduced me to my first celebrity client. <laughs> and I've been kind of styling celebrities since then. So oh, yeah. like I said, shoot myself in the foot. Yes. And you know what else is interesting? It's like you are, are working with people who are pseudo celebrities too. Like some of these major execs like Bazoma, yeah. like, you know, yeah. at any point they could be at the Oscars. At any point they could be at the Emmys, right? So it's yeah. like the line is kind of blurred, but yeah, it's very blurred, especially with the space that a lot of my executives are in. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they are pseudo celebrities in the sense that yeah. Bose, she is one of the biggest marketers out there. So mm -hmm. if you're in the realm of marketing, people yeah. love Bose, right? right? And then of course she's going to the Billboard Awards. She's going yeah. to the Oscars, the Grammys, the Emmy. So I was loving the fact that my executives were still going to these red carpet events and I didn't miss a red carpet moment. I just didn't style celebrities at the time. And Got so it. that would be like, oh, I'm getting my feel of having red carpet moments while still not <laughs> having to style an exact like celebrity quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I love about your story and the experiences you've shared with us? It's you are not afraid to humble yourself or do something different in the meantime. Like, yeah. how did you feel about that when 
here you are, you've quit your job, you're like, I'm a stylist now, but then you're interning. Or you've quit your job and you think you're about to, you know, you have this major client and then boom, you're working DoorDash. Like, how do you mentally handle those Ooh. shifts? I think I mentally handle those shifts through my faith. I think that my faith is so very much so important to me in a sense that I know that if he brought me this far, it was not for any reason to leave me. So yeah. there got to be at some point there's going to be a door, right? Yeah. There's going to yeah. be a way made. And the funny thing is that when I went to Gap Corporate, my first day, I was like, oh my God, I finally got to my dream job. <laughs> and I heard something whisper in my ear, like, you're not going to be here long. And I was like, what does that mean? Right? What, what? does that, that mean? Like, what does that mean? Like, Why I'm going to see always that hater there to, quote unquote, prepare you, but really just hate. <laughs> Right. I'm like, you know what I mean? What does that mean? What and so, mean? like, I also kind of took, like, yes, hate in the sense that, like, am I telling myself that, like, I don't deserve this? Or is God, like, is this a precursor from God saying, like, okay, like, this is cute now, but I got something bigger for you on the uh... way. And so, I'm like, okay, it kind of made sense in the end that I was not there long. I think yeah. I only spent four years in the corporate space and six of them were in the retail stores. Yeah. And I thought that I was at my dream job. And then I thought that I had made my way in LA and then that, that was over. And then I thought that I would be a nomad forever. And then I'm kind of like rooted now. And I thought that I would never style celebrities. in the <laughs> day. And so I always joke and say that, you know, I try to make plans. God laughs at every of single course, plan that I have ever course. tried to make. And so now I don't make plans when people are like, so what's next in the next five years? I'm not saying it because God is going to... No, he's going to shift it up. He's going to shake it up. It's I don't have a plan. I'm just going day by day. I have no plans. But yes, I think my faith has like grounded me in, you know, you go up and then you got to go pray again. You got to go <laughs> get intimate with God again. And like, I think yeah. that's the only thing that has kept me and it keeps me humble. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's humbling to know that we're not in control. Like no, we, exactly. you, you could get on a good spree and feel like, yeah, yeah. You know, cause it's cause I did this and that and that. And then like, mm -hmm. Life circumstances show you that you truly are not in control, like even when you're in a good career swing. So, you know, having that, I'm a woman of faith too, like, you know, having that guiding source to go back to. And, and it's like, I don't know why I always, you know, distance myself a little, like I get so happy. I'm like, oh, and then like you get that reality check. You're like, oh, oh I got to go back to, I got to go. <laughs> Yep, yep. He's we like, to to we got some stuff to talk about. You've been enjoying this too much. Are you reading? Are you in your word? Are you, are you praying? Are you praying? Are you trying to handle it yourself or are you asking? Right, so. right. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So I just love that about, you know, your story, your testimony, I should say. It's definitely, oh, definitely resonated with me today. And oh, before we get into the lightning round, I'd love to know a little bit more about what is the structure of your business today? So if someone wants to work with Germany, right, and they're not a celebrity, how does that process begin? We have about three or four services that we offer. Mm -hmm. And so we offer event styling both virtually yes. and in person. Okay. We offer the in-person event styling. And then, oh yes, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'll start over. So we have about four services that we offer. We offer event styling, which is both in-person and virtual. Mm -hmm. We also offer, I call them capsules, but I don't want people to get hung up on capsules mm -hmm. because I think they're very limiting. So we offer like a versatile refresh of the uh, wardrobe okay. where it's in person because we can't do that virtually, yeah. but we provide the client with 12 versatile outfits. I always say 12, but the client walks away with a lot more than that. I would say like 20 plus okay. head to toe outfits. And we take pictures of those so that you have them in your arsenal, mm. even when I'm not there or a member of my team is not there. Okay. And then we also have closet curations mm. where we come and we look at what you have, yep. we yep. take out what you don't need, and then we road map you into the things that you actually need so you can think methodically about mm -hmm. your wardrobe versus just buying on impulse or continuing yes. to make the wrong decisions when it comes to your wardrobe. Yes. So we try to educate you in a way that makes sense, in a way okay. that you can function when you don't have 
the stylist with you, right? Got it. Okay. And so those are core offerings to our clients. And so basically you just fill out a form. You decide, you decide <laughs> if you want to work with DD and Co. You fill out the yeah. form. We always try to make sure that it's a good fit for both parties. Okay. So we have that discovery call and, you know, I'm the only one who does the discovery call because okay. I want to make sure that like you feel good about this is an investment. And then yeah. also like we got to invest time in you too. Yeah. And so I want to make sure that this feels good. And even if like now on the forum, it says like, do you want to work with Germany specifically or are you open to working with a member of the team? Because I cannot be everywhere at one yeah. time. Yeah. Although I curate pretty much 90% of everything that goes yeah. out or I am looking at it after my yeah. assistants have curated it to make sure that it looks good and it feels on and brand reflects, for not yeah. only yeah for not only the client but also like Gigi like yeah. all the code and I gotta make sure this <laughs> looks good right and so yeah so you can decide if you want to work with me um, okay. personally or you want to work with a member of the team and then you know we decide for a good fit and then we go and we work together and a lot of our clients are repeat clients by yeah. a lot about 90 percent of them always come back yeah that's pretty much how to engage with us it's really easy you don't got to be yeah. a celebrity i promise okay. our okay. core clients are still our executives our professionals and our right. entrepreneurs yeah so yeah and as a service-based business how do you plan fight for your financials each year like how do you predict <laughs> how much <laughs> how was your financial model right predicting how much yeah. you might make and estimations and all of that so we kind of divvy it up by quarter i always mm -hmm. know that q1 is going to be remark well not remarkably this year remarkably but q1 is always going to be strong due to mm -hmm. award season and then uh, also okay. people are always thinking about so from our celebrities perspective and our pseudo celebrities they have award season right mm -hmm. but then also in the beginning of the year everyone's like oh i gotta think about my closet i want to yeah. think about you know how to show up better in this new year and so mm -hmm. we always get a big boom in q1 right and then we always know that q2 and q3 are pretty much going to drop off and so our numbers are going to be a little bit more soft because of summer spring break mm -hmm. a lot of our clients are on vacation Got it. but then we also know that like essence fest is during that time too so we're not going to plan like a big dip in our numbers, but we know that they're not going to be as big as Q1, right? Mm -hmm. So then what are the other things that we can do outside of our in-person, our virtual? And so we are actually this year adding in like some educational aspects where uh. if you want to engage with us and just learn about how to work on your style and show up more effectively just to add some more cash injection into the flow, yeah. Um, yeah. but also like to help other people who we can't always touch. And then Q4 is always strong because we're back to events and yes. awards season mm -hmm. actually starts in September uh -huh. and it doesn't end until like March of 2020 of the uh -huh. next year. And okay. so Q4 is always really strong because there's award season picks back up. And so we know that financially our bigger numbers are going to be in Q1 and Q4 and then Q2 mm -hmm two and Q3 are the ones where we have to just be a little more lean in the mm -hmm. business. Like I have to work a little more and my assistants work a little less. Um, and <laughs> but then um, also, yeah. yeah, but then also just being smart and deliberate mm -hmm. about, you know, how can we impact the business in other ways so that we can make sure that we don't dip as much or, you know, try to meet mm -hmm. the same numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like how, you know, you're thinking about it and you know your seasons, you know what's high, you yeah. know what's low and what yeah. to expect and then what to do to do that cash injection. So that's another big yeah. tip as well. Like think of your year and on a whole, know your high seasons, your low seasons and think about what you could do for cash injection. So that's another tip we'll take away from you, Germany. Now let's jump into a quick lightning round. You are just going to answer the very first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So number one, what is a resource that has helped you launch Gigi and Co. that you can share with the Side Hustle Pro audience? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. Yeah. Why? I feel like it, it helps you shape like how you think about things financially and just become a little bit more grounded and smarter when you approach finances. Yes. Not even from a business, but also personally. Yeah. Yes. Yes, for sure. I actually recently reread that. Was it like end of last year? But anyway, let me keep the lightning and lightning. Okay, <laughs> not, <laughs> number two. Number two, who is a non-celebrity black woman entrepreneur 
who you would want to switch places with for a day and why? Oh, Fawn Weaver. I love Fawn yes, Weaver. Fawn. We like, gotta get her I want to work with Fawn Weaver. Yes. If you hear me, Fawn Weaver, we're going to work together one day. But anyway, um, I, yes. I love her. She's a woman of faith, but she's a woman who is very confident in mm-hmm. not only who she is, yes. but her audience, her product. She knows exactly the rooms that she is destined to be in. Yeah. And like, I'm like, I don't drink whiskey, but I want some whiskey just because Farm <laughs> Weaver right, I gotta is that you. woman. Like, yeah. yes. Yeah. So I'm like, she's really doing it with Uncle Nearest mm-hmm. and just like helping that brand continue to grow. Yes. And I believe she just came out with her own whiskey mm-hmm. um, as a result of, you know, working with working yeah. with her family's company. Love it. Love it. Number three, um, what's a non-negotiable part of your day these days? Working out. Because if I'm not working out, I'm going to be mean to everybody. (laughs) (laughs) And not not to my clients. I'm just more manageable after I work, after I've had my me time so that I can, you know, function. Okay. Love it. (laughs) And then number four, what is a personal trait about Germany that has contributed to your success? Ooh, I think my nimbleness, like, and dang, nimbleness, resourcefulness. I'm gonna be yes. resourceful. I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah, always gonna I figure can see it that. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hustler. Okay, I must I'm have. It out. Yep. And then finally, what is your parting advice for fellow women entrepreneurs who want to be their own boss but are nervous about losing that steady paycheck? Yeah, do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. Fail, do fail it. fast. Like I said, don't burn those bridges. So even if it doesn't work, you can come back or you can figure out a way where you can do your nine to five and then also, you know, still have your side puzzle. Mm -hmm. I don't think entrepreneurship and I don't say this. I don't say this with malice at all. Full time entrepreneurship is not for everybody. It is tough. And so, you know, if you can still have your side hustle and keep your nine to five, like go for it. Or if you feel like, you know, you can be an intrapreneur inside your corporate space, do that too. But don't be sad or don't beat up on yourself if you don't do the full-time entrepreneurship route. Keep them benefits in that (laughs) healthcare. Yes, the benefits are real. (laughs) They are real. But anyway, like, you know, if it's on your heart to do it, do it. Love it. And so thank you so much for being in the guest chair. Where can people connect with you and Gigi and Co. after this episode? Yeah, you can connect with me via Instagram at Germany underscore G or via website at GermanyG.com or GGandCoStyling.com. I believe they redirect to each other. So (laughs) either way, you can get to me. And then I believe LinkedIn is Germany Gerald and that's G-E-R-A-L-D because I do not use my last name these days. But yeah, those are the the big ways that one could connect with me. All right. I love it. We will link to all of those guys in the show notes. Again, Germany, thank you so much. I'm glad we finally got to catch up and learn more about your journey. I was super inspired and I hope you guys are as well. Okay. I'll do that too. Yes. And there you have it. Talk to you guys next week. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six bullet Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you will receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.